First day of September, gorgeous day outside. Uh, I got a scrimmage for you on Tuesday, and I thought I'd make a series of videos here of where we're at, what I'm hoping you know, what I'm hoping you've learned to this point in time. I'm sure we'll continue to try to get into a deeper understanding of everything I talk about throughout the semester. But just at this stage, what are we looking at? So on and so forth. And I'm going to break these videos up into separate categories. I'm going to talk about a linear calculation right now. Uh, about 10 things that I'm hoping that uh, you got a good shot at. All right. And the first is actually, I think it's important that you do understand MX plus B because it's everywhere in textbooks and it's uh, been taught that way for centuries, perhaps. Well, no, M, the letter M, I think, showed up from a French mathematician in the 1800s. Rise over run, stuff like that. I don't teach it anymore. I haven't done it. And probably I haven't done the typical method of the way this is taught, but I thought from a historical standpoint, I should at least show you. So let's say we got five, seven, nine, ten, and then we'll compare it to the way that we're learning how to write the equational line. And you tell me which is easier and which is better. All right. So how do we get this using two points? Well, we got to do M first. 5 to 9, change of 4, 7 to 10, change of 3, and now we're here. And then we have an X, we have a Y, and that allows us to solve for B. So 3, 4 times X, X meaning something in Arabic. Talked about that today. We will be talking about that today in class. So, oops. I said, said what I wanted you to do with it, but I didn't write it. So I'm giving you an X value, horizontal value of five. I don't know B yet, but I do know the Y value produced is a seven. So now I got to do some fraction work, 15 fours plus B. And I'll take a little poetic license here and turn seven, seven into fourths, which is 28 fourths, another name for seven. And so I can see that B is equal to 28 fourths minus 15 fourths, and that is equal to what, 13 fourths. Okay, and so therefore, I now know that I have the equation, uh, where am I, 3 fourths X, Y equals 3 fourths X uh, plus 13 fourths. And this is the product. What makes that product zero? Plug in zero for X. And I'm up at 13 fourths, a little bit more than three. And I'm going over four units and up three. All right, and that's the typical way that that is taught. All right, let's jump into what I'll be asking you. And I'll leave that there. And I'll leave this here. And we'll write the equation of the line the way we've been writing it. Now, some of you are still having a little trouble with it. So my first suggestion is to rewrite it in tabular form. Five gets you seven, nine gets you 10. It's easier to see the changes. And don't do X2 minus X1. No, just simply say, from five, how do I get to nine? Four units. From seven, how do I get to 10? Up three, okay? All right, so we look at that and what have we been doing? We've been taking the first coordinate, getting rid of the first number, bringing in the second as a principle of conversion, and then looking at the changes and writing three fourths. That's it. Now, I also have, so that's one thing. Right? The second thing is actually getting it in this form just for the practice of working with fractions. So how do we do that? We do the distributive property, 3 fourths X minus 15 fourths. All right, there's your tripling of negative five and then dividing it by four and adding 28 fourths. All right, I'm running out of room, so I'll use the eraser, but I think you can see where we're headed. Okay, that line of work becomes this one. And I'll be asking you that on Tuesday to convert 
to slope intercept form and take 15 away from 28. And yes, we're right back where we were before, but I think I could do both of those things quicker than the way that's generally taught. All right, so that's two. All right, so first, write the equation of a line. So equation of the line, right? Let's just see EL, or how about WEL, right? The equation of the line. Two, change it to MX plus B form. Expect two of those questions coming your way on Tuesday. What's the next thing? Well, the next thing is to, you know, I haven't asked it in this form yet, but can you tell me the next two, the next uh, coordinate? I hope you understand something about 13 and 13 and what, what was it, four, so 17 and 16. I'm hoping you're thinking about that. We've been talking about it every day, all right? But I haven't asked in that context. What I've given you is the equation of a line. Let's try another one. So y equals minus two fifths, x plus seven plus eight. I mean, if you can write this equation from a couple of points, you should be able to tell me after it's written where those points came from. And I'm hoping that you zero in on the most important X value in this because this is a product and we're really been really pushing understanding <laughs> if one of the factors of a product is zero, you have knowledge. So I'm hoping you're picking negative seven. I think most of you are in class now. And if you pick negative seven, that product is gone, but the sum of eight is not. So we have a starting point. And I'm hoping you're beginning to gain an understanding of where this is coming from. Change in Y, change in X, right? And of course the change in Y in textbooks is Y2 minus Y1, change in X is X2 minus X1, and that is all true, but it's easier just to say, change your X by five. I tend to go up. Some people go down. I'm going to go up. Minus two, three, change by five, eight. Right? That's what I'm hoping I see on this side. Go down by two on the Y side. Six, four, two. And you're just learning. And after Zoom, looking at a screen, you know, we got we to gotta catch up a little bit because that wasn't the best learning experience for you. All right, so let's check eight, two and see if it works because that I think means I went down two units once, two units twice, two units three times. Let's find out if it's true. Eight plus seven, 15. And in class we talked about, you can divide five into 15. You can do it that way. And if you do five into 15 is three. Ah, oh, you know what, from eight, I think I'm going down two units three times. And you need to think about that. And if you didn't understand what I just said, back up, play it again. But that's gonna be asked, all right? So MX plus B, name three points. I'll just keep track of what I'm expecting you to know about linear functions. All right, so that's in there. So I guess I'm expecting you to be able to graph. All right, so let's go y equals negative 3 sevenths x plus 8 plus 9, for instance. All right, it's a linear function. How many points do you need to graph a linear function? Two. So if you just... Show me something that's going down three to seven, something in that kind of ratio, that's the change. Remember, X, X is horizontal ruler, Y, vertical ruler, change in Y, down three, change in X over seven, and label this point, and what is this point? I'm hoping you know the important X and the Y that goes with it. I'm hoping you're saying minus eight, nine. Okay, and then I've got a decreasing function and I might as well nail that point. Although I would give full credit for this. If I see that, well, it's nice to have a little arrow there. All right, I would expect that to, you know, get full credit to get one of these critters. 
That's your job, get as many of those as you can. All right, so if I go down three, well, that's the Y value. So that means that became six. And if I went up seven from negative eight, then it should be there. And I don't need a coordinate axis. That tells me you understand what's going on. All right, it doesn't hurt to see it work. Oh, what's minus one plus eight? Seven. Well, gee, seven goes into seven. My brain's gonna work. Minus three plus nine, six. All right, so sketching. Now there is one more type of graphing form. I haven't pushed it as much as I wish, but let's talk about standard form. And you only get credit from me if something's written in standard form, if you simply graph from that form. If you change it, then you don't understand standard form. Okay, so standard form is 2x plus 5y equals 20. Okay, and these are products. So what could you do with this product? You could make it zero. Right, there's a two times. I could let x equal zero. Well, if x is zero, it's like covering it up. <laughs> okay, so it's gone. I hope everybody knows five times what is 20. Okay, well, that's called, let's plot where that is. Oh, x is zero, y is four. That's a y-intercept. This is a product. What could I do? I could make it zero. Oh, it's covering it up. Looks like I got 2x equals 20. What makes five times y equals zero? A y value of zero. And that gives me, I bring it up, an x value of 10, which might be out here, 10, zero. And I think that's an x-intercept. So standard form, if you're gonna graph it, I wanna see the x and y intercepts. And if you're paying attention to what I'm talking to right now, you got a shot of getting that right on your test. It's coming your way on Tuesday. What else do we have? Kind of losing. So standard form, so sketching, point slope. So this is kind of point slope, our own version of point slope. Um, shouldn't talk about that right now since it's everything we're, we're doing. So this is what's in the textbooks. Okay, that's in the textbooks. And so graphing that means you have to start at the right place, a point. Eight seems critical. That would give me y minus five equals, if I plug an eight in here, I hope you see that becomes zero on the right. Oh, I guess my y value is five. That's called a point. From the coordinate eight, five, up two over seven to a new point, right? That's what's in the textbooks. I'm morphing it into adding five on this side. I think it's easier to read left to right. Okay, but I'm gonna call that our point slope and I want you to know how to sketch. All right, now, how do we get equations in standard form? I used to ask students to be able to do that. I don't know if I care about that so much anymore. And for Tuesday's test, we'll let it ride. Uh, so what else is there that I'm expecting you to know? Well, linear functions could be written without the letter Y. F of X. Or G of X. Or H of X. Okay, so let's say I give you H of X is 2X cubed plus 7. And let's say F of X is... Um, four plus two log base three of x minus eight. And g of x is um, three sevenths x minus two plus five. Okay, only one of those is linear, all right? I hope you recognize the g is what we're talking about in this video. So I only put different things up here because what if I said I wanted h of four. Well, you got three different calculations. So you got to be able to distinguish them, right? And so this is an evaluation. I'd hope you plug four in, right? But we're talking about the linear now. 
So I'm going to erase the other calculations. And I guess I have to ask the question, what is G of, hmm, doesn't matter what number I pick, I'll pick it random, five. Then you are expected to do what if you see that? I now know what my X value is. So that's something I want to be five. And I do three sevenths. Five minus two plus five. I guess I like the number five. And I want to see if you know how to do the fractional work because I've got students coming into higher levels now. <laughs> I hate to say this, but can't add and subtract fractions or multiply and divide. And if you are in that category coming off of the Zoom classes and stuff, we got to explain it. We got to do it in class. It's a gap that has to be filled. So three sevenths times three plus five on an intuitive level, I hope you know that three sevenths, three of them make nine sevenths. Okay. Hope the numbers speak for themselves there, but I got other ways to show you what it is. These are not like terms. This division is division by one. This one's division by seven. They got to be the same if you're going to count. And so five happens to be 35 over seven. And so I think I know my answer now. I think I know what G of five is. G of five is 44 sevens. And you'll get one of those from me. I guess I erased all the things, but you can always play this video again. All right, so that's an evaluation. And what happens if we have a calculation, say, uh, like uh, f of x is equal to 2 thirds x minus 8, okay? Written in slope form, point slope uh, y intercept form. Slope y intercept, finally said it. See, I haven't done it in 20 years this way. All right, so how about I say, I ask the question f of x equals. Uh, Let's go two. No, I already got a two in there. Let's make it seven. Right? Some people you've tried, few of you have struggled with that. Not sure what it is, which means we keep talking about it every day until you do know what it is. All right? This is kind of like saying if A equals B, right? If A equals B and A equals C, <laughs> then I think B equals C. I don't know how I could show that. I got five. Five is equal to one plus four. All right, I got five. Five is also equal to 10 divided by two. Well, if that's true, then one plus four also equals 10 divided by two. If that's true. So f of x equals seven. Well, this is f of x. When's it equal seven? Well, I guess that's solving an equation. So this is like saying, I know the Y value, I don't know the X. The other one we did, like if I said F of five, well, then I know the X value, plug it in to get the Y. Seems a reasonable thing to ask you to learn. And I just erased the problem. So what did I say originally? Oh yeah, F of X equals seven. So let's do it. Two thirds X minus eight equals seven. And in this class, we're trying to learn how to do things quickly because I am prizing thinking right now. I'm not prizing teaching you how to behave. I don't know what I just said or why. That's all right. So what have we been pushing? What have we been looking at in class? Inverse operations, we talked about operations. You do the hard stuff to the easy. Well, when you solve, you go backwards. It's kind of like walking into the woods and getting lost. How do you get out? You retrace your steps. So if I evaluated, I would multiply by two, divide by three and subtract eight, probably. Although either of these operations, doesn't matter which way you do them. All right, last thing I said was subtract eight. So therefore I'm gonna add eight on this side. We've looked at why that's true in class. That number's gone. Woo. That means this is left. Division by three could have been multiplication by three. That operation is gone. Multiplication by two, division by two. And you keep looking at that until you understand what I just did. 
think it's reasonable to expect that you can sort through that. All right, so that's evaluating and solving. We have not looked at this in any great detail, but it is gonna come your way. How do you write the inverse? Well, the inverse is really all the steps I just took in solving this, right? How would I get from 45 halves back? How would I get from 45 over two, right? Well, what would I do? I take this answer and add eight. Right? <laughs> so then I do what? I multiply by three and divide by two. I don't like the way I'm saying my uh, teaching this at the moment. So I'm going to back up and say that uh, let's get an easier answer here. So let's plug in a three. All right. So what is F of three? Well, I hope you can see the threes cancel and two minus eight is negative six. Okay. Which means the inverse has to take negative six and bring it back to a three. All right. So how would you solve this if you had an answer over here? You'd add eight, but this is built on the letter X because it means something. So you would take something, in this case, the answer to these equations, and you would add eight. And then what would you do? You'd multiply by three. This is a very important moment because this is a number based on what I use for X, which means in algebra one, I'm hoping you learn how we need to use parentheses at this instant. So whatever this is, I'm gonna multiply it by three. That undoes this operation. Then I'm gonna divide it by two. That is the inverse of this. And we wanna check it by plugging in a number. So let's plug in negative six. Negative six plus eight is positive two. What happens to the twos? They divide out to be one, and one times three is three. So this notation is very different than this notation. This notation on a number is simply telling you to take the reciprocal of the quantity. This has a very different meaning. And I just wanna point that out because you've seen this in a different context. <laughs> you're liable to think that this is one over f of x and it is not. It has an entirely different meaning. And that happens in language sometimes. The same word used in different contexts has different meaning. Can't, can't think of an example of it, but I hope I just said something that's true. All right, so let's do one of those. But I'll try to give you a little simpler one. Let's look at a function f of x equals two thirds x minus five. That can be the same problem or not. Uh, well, let's do it. I put it on the board. So what is the inverse of that? And I can see if I put a, uh, what's an easy number? Six in here, All right? Three goes into six, two, two times two is four. Four minus five is negative one. After I write this, I'm gonna check it to see if a negative one brings me back to a six. Ah, where do we start? We start by, hmm, what if I were solving an equation over here, right? I get an answer over here, but I'm gonna call that answer X. How would I solve if I wanted it to equal that? Gotta add five. Well, I still got that same situation as before, so it doesn't hurt to see it again. I gotta multiply by three and divide by two. That's, that's what you would do if you were solving this, all right? And so let's actually solve an equation for uh, negative one, which we believe is equal to uh, six. It'll be easier to see it here. So subtraction of five becomes addition of five. If I add five to that, I get four. Division by three becomes multiplication by three. I get 12. Multiplication by two becomes division by two, there's your six, okay? So if I had this, right, I could plug negative one in and use it. I could plug negative one in, it should get six. Negative one plus five is four. Four divided by two is two. And two times three is six. I'm talking a little fast here. 
but we're gonna be doing this on a daily basis. And when we get to the board, which we won't be for a while because I think our foundation has to strengthen before we get back there again. Uh, I'm gonna amend how we're doing things at the board slightly. Uh, as I see us work, what's gonna be more effective, uh, not being there at the moment will be more effective. Uh, where am I now? Uh, that's pretty much what I'm hoping to ask you for scrimmage time on Tuesday. How many more things are there on the linear side? Well, one really big topic, then I'm not going to show you how to do it now, and it's not going to be on your scrimmage. But 2x minus 3y equals 30, and let's do x plus 5y equals, uh, let me think of something that's nice, uh, about 20. Okay. learning how to solve what is called a systems of equation. I do not know why they call it a system. Um, all right, something here should ring a bell though. Talked about that earlier in this uh, video, that standard form, how do you use standard form? X and Y intercepts, what's your Y intercept? It looks to be negative 10. What's your X intercept? It looks to be 15, which is a little bit bigger. This is also a statement, an expression, a sentence. Let's see if I can get the language right here. Standard form of a line. You graph it, same way you graph that. You look at the Y intercept, which is four. You look at the x-intercept, which is 20. Well, that's twice. It's, uh, I think I forget what that one was. 15, I think. I don't know. 20, something like that. Well, what do these two linear functions do? They intersect. And we're going to find the x and the y. And we're going to approximate what that is. All right? Let's see. This one here was 4. That's a height of 4. So I know it's between 0 and 4. And that one came from this. And that was 15. So I should have something a little bit bigger than 50, just a little, and some y value that's definitely between uh, four and zero. And if I don't get that x and the y, at least I know I got a wrong answer. Okay. Can I think for a second, is there anything else that I, oh yes, there is another type of equation that I do want you to know. Should have put that on the board, but I will be asking it because it's been on your worksheets already. Got to get a better marker here. I'll try to keep the numbers small, x minus one. I'm not going to teach it right now. I'll teach it in class today. So let's look at minus three fifths x plus seven. All right, well, I will do this one out. Doesn't hurt to get another look-see. Um, so how do you do this? Well, fractions are a pain. How do you get rid of division? Multiplication. Well, let's just look at one plus two equals three. Let's say I multiply everything by 10. 10 plus 20 equals 30. It looks like I can do that. And I still maintain equality. So I'm looking at a three and a five. How can I get rid of a division by three and a division by five? Let's multiply by 15. And we can divide three into 15 five times. And five times two X is 10 X. I can multiply 15 times negative one. I'm capable of answering that. I can divide five into 15, three, and three times what's left gets me minus nine X. And 15 times seven is, if you want to do that in your head, 15 times seven, this is how you do it. 15 times seven, you do seven times 10 plus five. You use the distributive property to improve your multiplication skills. So 70 plus 35 is 105, and I'm not going to do the rest of this. I expect that we know how to do that. Although that could, I suppose I've asked that in the past. All right, so you bring the nine to this side, 19X, you bring the 15 to that side, 120, and therefore X is 120 over 19. Yeah, you might see a problem like that on your test Tuesday. All right, and that's the end of this video. And we will practice that in class today. Okay, and now I'm about to make the quadratic video. And after the quadratic video, probably gonna make maybe the exponential. Hmm, but probably square root video, all the things you need to know. And after the square root video, hmm, definitely exponential. And exponential lead into logs. 
And our Pythagorean theorem that we're learning leads into the study of trigonometry. We're going to get there too. All right. See you in class. Ciao, ciao.